This is Jared Horak, and in this video, I'm going to analyze the Grade 1 Arkansas Derby at Oaklawn, and this race will be run Saturday, March 30th, 2024. If you're interested in checking out my Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks reports, you'll find those reports at todaysracingdigest.com on their Kentucky Derby page, and you'll find that Kentucky Derby page by going over to their homepage at the top near the left. You're going to see a Kentucky Derby tab, and when you click on that, you're going to find my Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks reports. Every Monday, I update the Oaks. Every Tuesday, I update the Derby. And then throughout the week, I do other Oaks and Derby-related articles at todaysracingdigest.com on their Kentucky Derby page. And if you're interested in a one free complete digest from now through April, go over to todaysracingdigest.com on their complete digest page and the complete digest tracks they cover, Oaklawn, Gulfstream, Santa Anita Park. You can get one free complete digest from now through April by using promo code DERBY5424. In the description in this video, I'll provide that promo code, and I'll also provide a link to that Complete Digest page. And later this spring, I'm going to be covering my annual Triple Crown Series full cards. I'm also going to be doing Kentucky uh, Oaks Day full card this year, Black Eyed Susan Day full card, and then uh, when they run the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga this year, they're going to have the four-day Belmont Stakes uh, Festival, and I'm going to be covering full cards for all of those as well. Go over to therunawayhorse.com. That's my personal website for more details on my sales page. And those uh, full cards will also be available at todaysracingdigest.com. And uh, now we'll get into the analysis of this video. 12th race at golf at Oaklawn. Uh, this is the grade one, $1.5 million Arkansas Derby for three-year-olds traveling a mile and an eighth on the main track. 7.47 p.m. Eastern is the post time. And the past performance is in this video provided by todaysracingdigest.com. And we'll take it. We'll start the field in here. This is a son of Tappet, still a maiden. He is improving. He broke. Uh, he was second by a nose last time. Just missed breaking his maiden at 42 to one odds in a 12 horse field. That was on February 24th at a mile and a 16th on a fast track at Oakland. He caught the slot before that, and then he was unplaced in his debut as well. That last race, a much improved effort, uh, but he's really going to have to improve again uh, to, to to threaten this group. They did pay 700 thousand for this son of Tappet. Number two, Timberlake, a solid win contender in here for trainer Brad Cox. This is the son of Into Mischief, and they paid $350,000 for him, and he was a quality two-year-old. Broke his maiden by nine lengths in his second career start, adding blinkers in the grade one hopeful as my top choice. He was the two-to-one favorite there. That was a fast pace. He didn't have a great start, and he stayed up on the pace, and he hung in there throughout. He was second best. Matella Fella took advantage of a pace collapse there, and he was able to win that race. Uh, so Timberlake ran okay there. And then in the grade one champagne, Fierceness uh, had that uh, bad start there. And Timberlake didn't have a bad start. He stalked the pace, had a nice trip, and he dominated the grade one champagne at, uh, by more than four lengths at uh, nine to two odds. Good effort in that event for him. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile, he ended up finishing fourth. Fierceness dominated that one. Muth, next out stakes winner. He's in this race as well, finished second. Then Locked was third. And then Timberlake ended up finishing fourth. And then in his first start this year as my top choice in the grade two Rebel Stakes, he was 80 cents on the dollar. He's had a good stalking trip, and he was able to win by two lanes over Common Defense. Common Defense did come back. Uh, he finished fifth uh, in the Louisiana Derby, and then Northern Flame was in that race as well, and he was unplaced in the Jeff Ruby Stakes. So Timberlake is probably saving ground, stalking the pace. Uh, Flavian Pratt's going to ride him for the first time. Di Maddock was in the Rebel Stakes, and he was fifth, beaten seven lengths. Uh, he was losing Lasix and adding blinkers that day, and he was 9-1, to one, and he raced evenly in that 12-horse field. Uh, he's going to have to improve again, again for trainer Steve S. Musson. This is the son of Gunrunner. Looked good in his maiden win in, on a wet track prior to that Rebel Stakes, uh, but now um, he's going to have to run a much better race uh, than he did in the Rebel. He'll have to improve several lengths. Uh, the three-year-olds can do that, but he's definitely going to have to do that com to compete with these. Time for Truth should be up on the pace for trainer Ron Moquette. Stretching, uh, he stretched out in distance in his third start, broke his maiden, battling on the pace in his debut at six furlongs at Oaklawn. And then in the Ozark Stakes in the mud, he was all over the pace and he was second there. And then they stretched him out last time out and he stalked. He took the lead. He opened up by three lengths and he was able to hold on by a length and a half. He was the favorite in his last two starts. He had Lasix last time, won't have it here. And this is his second route start. And he's got to go a bit further this time against better company. Should be on the pace under Rafael Bejarano, his regular rider. 
Liberal arts is a bit interesting. This is a son of arrogant, and he's run six times, two wins, a second, and three thirds. Very consistent uh, coat here for trainer Robert Medina. And Tyler Gaslione uh, will reunite uh, with him. He did ride him in his second career start. Third in his debut, it was at Churchill Downs. And then at Ellis Park in his second start, Gaslione was aboard. And he's, he uh, pre uh, pressed the pace. Then he led, and then he ended up finishing second. And then in his next start, he broke his maiden at seven furlongs at Ellis. And he stalked from post 11 that day. His last three races in Kentucky Derby points races. The first Derby, point, Derby points race was the grade three Iroquois last September, and he rallied to finish third there. That was a decent effort. And then in the grade three street scent stakes in the slop, he picked up a victory there. And he rallied uh, from uh, last place in a five-horse field. He went last to first, going away by two and three-quarter lengths. The Southwest stakes, I made him my top choice there in the mud. Uh, that was his first start this year on February 3rd. He rallied from ninth and then 11-horse field. Now, he was third, uh, beaten uh, more than eight lengths there, but he just missed second by a neck. He was really gaining on that runner-up. He was more than nine lengths clear of the rest of the field, and he galloped out in front of your romping winner, Mystic Dan. So Liberal Arts has been targeting this race ever since. They were never going to run him in the Rebel. They decided after the South Southwest that they would point to the Arkansas Derby. He's been training well for this. He's got a couple bullet works, and if the pace heats up enough, he can get involved from off the pace. Informed Patriot. The trainer, Steve Esmussen, is one for six lifetimes. So he's eligible for an entry-level allowance race. He has three third-place finishes, and one of those, or two of those, were in Kentucky Derby points races. The grade three street sense, liberal arts won. He was third there. The Smarty Jones stakes, he was third in that race. Now, Chasing Freedom won that one. He came back and won the Louisiana Derby. And last time in the Sunland Derby, Stronghold, one of your top contenders for the Santa Anita Derby, was able to win that one. Informed Patriot was fifth, beating 13 lengths. Ricardo Santana Jr. Uh, gets back aboard. He rode him in the Smarty Jones Stakes, and he'll probably sit in mid pack trying to stalk the pace. Muth for trainer Bob Baffert is your morning line favorite, and he's run well in all five starts, three wins in two seconds. Romped in his career debut June of, of 2023, and they paid $2 million for this son of good magic, and right off the bat, he showed that he was going to be a good horse. He was 30 cents on the dollar, definitely not a secret in the debut. He was one to two, second time out in the best pal stakes, but he got stuck in a pace duel there, and his stablemate, Prince of Monaco, took advantage of that, and he rallied from off the pace to win. Muth was clearly second best. They stretched him out in distance in the grade one American Pharaoh. He relaxed nicely, stalking the pace from an inner post and winning easily by more than three lengths. He was 40 cents on the dollar there. I made him my top choice in the grade one Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And he was second, uh, no match for fierceness. He dominated that one. Uh, but Muth was able to hold a uh, locked your late runner off uh, for a second by a half length. And then in his first start this year, the grade two San Vicente stakes. That was at seven furlongs in January at Santa Anita Park. And he was 40 cents on the dollar. And he stalked and dominated that one by more than two lengths. He's stretching out in distance again for his first start uh, since January. He's been able to at least handle a mile and a 16th. He did that easily in the grade one American Pharaoh. Breeders' Cup Juvenile, he ran a decent enough race, finishing second. He's uh, had a bullet workout for this at Santa Anita on March 22nd. Now, Bob Baffert's horses are ineligible to earn Kentucky Derby points, so he's using this as a Preakness prep, and Muth should sit a good stalking trip under Juan Hernandez. Just Steel, uh, this one for trainer D. Wayne, Luke, um, for trainer D. Wayne Lucas and Keith Asmussen is going to ride for the first time. And in his last start in the Rebel Stakes, he was seventh beaten 10 lanes, but that doesn't tell the story. That was um, a 12-horse field. It was, uh, and he was out in post 11, and he was at least five wide all the way around the track. So he was hung out to dry. You can't really hold that race against him. In the Southwest, he was second beaten eight lanes, just did hold off liberal arts. And then the Smarty Jones Stakes, he was second. And then the Ed Brown Stakes, he won that one. But he's had some good success in stakes races prior to that Rebel Stakes. And like I said, in the Rebel, he didn't have a great trip there. Now, if he can work out a better trip from post eight, definitely can use him in the exotics. Mystic Dan ran away with the Southwest, but I'm not sure where that came from. That was in the mud. And sometimes you can see some uh, blowout victories when the tracks are wet. And just based on his other, other form, he just never showed that kind of ability before. Although second time out, he did break his maiden by more than seven lengths, but he was the heavy favorite. And that was at five and a half furlongs against maidens. And then against Optional Claiming Company, he was fifth beaten eight lengths. The Smarty Jones Stakes, he was fifth beaten three lengths, pressing the pace. And then he relaxed uh, in that 
last start. He didn't uh, ever come from that far behind before. Maybe those patient tactics paid off. Maybe it was the mud. Uh, he got a, a great trip that day. What, whatever the case may be, he, he ran a big race there. Uh, but I want to see him do it again. Uh, he's not going to be 11 to 1 this time. Uh, Imperial Gun is next uh, for trainer Steve S. Musson, and this son of Gunrunner is 1 for 3. Uh, second time out, he ran a much better race to break his maiden, and he stalked and he pulled clear and he won easily that day on December 31st. And then in his last start, it was an optional claiming race at Oakland, and he was fourth um, in a seven horse field. He was the beaten favorite, adding Lasix. Loses Lasix, is stuck in the outside post in here, and I think he's probably up against it. Now I'll give out my top four, but before I do, uh, Mystic Dan is one that I'm going to try to beat in here. I'm going to make him prove oh, that that last race was for real. So Mystic Dan, I will try to defeat him in this race. But I wouldn't be shocked if he runs back to that last race. Obviously, he's a contender, uh, but not for me in this spot. My fourth choice is Just Steel. The trainer, Dwayne Lucas, just hung out to dry in that last race. If he can get a better trip in here, his Southwest Marty Jones, Ed Brown type form can uh, net him a minor award. Uh, my third choice is going to be the Seven Muth. Um, for trainer Bob Baffert, this is, as I said, a $2 million son of good magic with exact finishes in all five starts. He's a grade one winner around two turns. Good effort in the San Vicente last time. He's using this as a prep for the Preakness. And I would expect that Muth is ready to run a quality race. Uh, he hasn't run this far yet. Uh, so this mile and an eighth distance uh, could give him some trouble. We'll have to see how that plays out. My second choice is the two Timberlake. As I said, my top choice in the Rebel. Very professional there, winning by a couple lengths. Uh, he's going to have to improve in his second start after a layoff in order uh, to beat this field. But he showed ability last year at a couple grade ones, second in the grade one hopeful, first in the grade one champagne, and then fourth in the grade one Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He has plenty of ability, and he should work out a good inner tactical trip under Flavian Pratt. I'm going to take a shot with liberal arts again. I liked him in the Southwest. He's my top choice in here. I just liked how he finished the Southwest. He had. A nice stretch energy that day, uh, finishing up nicely, just missing second behind Just Steel. Nine lengths clear of the fourth place finisher, galloping out in front of your romping winner, Mystic Dan. So I think Liberal Arts, his second start of the year, has been targeting this race for quite some time. And if he can get enough pace help, I think Liberal Arts can spring the upset in the Grade 1 Arkansas Derby. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this horse racing content. And keep checking my YouTube channel for all of these Road to the 2024 Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks videos. Some of them I do in short format, and in others I do in um, long form format. Uh, it's typically the Kentucky uh, Derby points races, I've been doing it, uh, most of those in long form format. Some of them in short form. And when I don't have time to do seven or eight videos a week, I'll throw some short videos as well. So uh, keep checking all of that on my YouTube channel. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races.